shitting me? At long last, I'm finally doing a spell video. I know I should have made one of these years ago, but a few months later, here it is. So, <clears throat> I'm one of those witches that pretty much thinks like this. You want it? Go for it. But isn't that against their free will? Um, if you want something, go get it. If something's in your way, get it out of the way. But of course, you know, be practical and think. Is this person married and living a happy, devoted life with someone else? And if I try ruining that by doing the love magic on that, is it going to make me feel good about it? And am I going to feel right about it? That's for you, for you to decide, and that's your own moral ethic. I'm one of those witches that doesn't believe the threefold law. I'm a practitioner that goes with, like, whatever I put out, I get back. As I say, it goes. There's no, well, what if it backfires? That doesn't exist. Whenever I do a working, it doesn't come back around and go, hey, and hit me upside the face. That's just not possible. Back when I first started, <laughs> yeah, that happened too much. But So for this one, I'm going to be doing just a simple, sweet, I have no idea, like a sweet, notice me senpai, love, Campbell, BS crap. So, we're going to need, well, obviously the candle. You're going to, well, you don't need to have a mortar and pestle. Just something that you can put, like, your dry herbs, which I'll be giving some examples over here in about two seconds. So you can put them in there and go smashy, mix, smashy. Then the dry herbs I have with me quite the hot mess of a pick. I just completely draw a blank here. Corn flour, catnip, bag of lavender, straight from France, and saffron. You're also going to need a writing instrument of some kind to inscribe on it. You're going to also need... Well, this one can kind of go with the herbs. You can use essential oils, which pretty much contain the essence of the plant that you're going to be using. In case you don't want to use dry herbs, you just want to get it all oily up. And... The last one are intention oils for the work you're trying to do. I have my own mixes. I don't give those up. So, first and foremost, I have a candle going in the back that's a spiritual cleansing and keeping any BS out of the way. Because usually when you're trying to make a magical item or whatnot, if your area is not cleansed of nastiness, it's going to go right into it and make it a hot mess and mess it up. So, people have their own ways of going and making whatever they don't want here to go and skedaddle. I just keep it simple. Just completely focus in on self and just a big push everything out of my life. And none of it can come back until I'm done with this. So, and also, if your candle or whatever you're trying to turn into a magical burn stick is not wrapped, you can do the same. You can do a cleansing of some kind, some kind on it to make it neutral. Because if you have something that's been, you know, groped and all fiddly, fiddly, it's gonna f not. I mean, it'll do hopefully what you're hoping for, but it has that. Uh, slot machine effect of like you never know what you're going to get with and you don't want them under doing the hard work of this so obviously if you have it wrapped remove from the packaging 
And this is where probably people are gonna be like, "Wow, kid, you can't even get the you can't even get the wrapper off." <laughs> I don't use wraps, and I can't believe I just said that. Well, there goes the G rating. Oh God. And this color, usually with I use my teeth to open stuff, don't judge me. But usually when it comes to love work or any kind of work to like attract to you, you can use basic pink. This is metallic pink, which is like having an extra bit of flair to it. But like whew, instead of like, oh sweet. Another color you could use is green. You can use red, even though that's more of a Mars color. You can use red. You can use magenta. Pretty much any color you deem fit that makes you feel, I swear to sweet baby Jesus. This is probably gonna, oh, there we go. Oh God, that looks so suggestive. And it's smooth. Um, about that. Okay, so for an example, say that you just picked this up like this, bought it like this, and uh, you want to cleanse it. Well, there's so many ways you can go about cleansing it. You could just put it in water, cleanse it that way. You can do what I like to do, just grab it up, facing the tip out that way, away from you. Open palm to the tush of it, and just one, two, three. Get all the BS out of it. Now this is neutral. So what I'm going to do first is get the lot of herbs in this you know mortar and pestle. So since we're going to be doing kind of a love kind of a work first, I'm going to put in just a little bit of corn flour. Corn flour is a very, very good herb to help, you know, kind of like magically break the ice and help the communication. Stop making noises, even though I'm home alone. As I was saying, corn flour is very good for breaking the ice magically. It's really good to open in communication. If there's a blockage for some reason, it kind of helps you get on the same page with uh, with your intended or target. Next is catnip. Probably thinking, why are you putting catnip in this? Well, with catnip, it's a plant that, well, when you give catnip to a cat, it goes, gets all crazy and intoxicated, gets infatuated for some odd reason. And when you were to put this on somebody else, the idea is that you take to take a little bit of catnip, just a little bit like that, grab the hand of the person, and now they're all, hmm, that was warm, to have that extra draw effect. And the last, well, second to the last, one of my favorite herbs is lavender. Pretty much lavender is a very calming, soothing herb. Pretty much to describe, or like a good visualization. If any, if any of you have watched like the original Yu-Gi-Oh series, you know, like Mike Maximilian Pegasus, yeah, that's lavender. Hey, Yuki boy. Yeah, there's your lavender. And the last but not least, or where is this little nasty? Right there. Is a little bit of saffron. Oh, saffron. My favorite herb to use. Pretty much what saffron does, saffron pretty much takes any love mixture you have and quadruples its strength. It's that potent, and you don't need a lot. You just need, like, mm. I don't even know if you can see it, but even that's a bit too much. Oh, oh well. Pop it right in there. Seal that up to make sure we don't have red string everywhere. Now, 
Mm, that smells intoxicating. Now, you have your hot mess of plants right there. Now you're going to take, obviously, your poundy thingy, Mobinia. <laughs> and pretty much you're just going to grind the herbs. If you'd like to have your intention be said, you can say it aloud. I usually just keep it in my head and just get the hard work part of it done. And while you're doing this, don't put the, the grinded herbs on the candle yet. Put your oily stuff on first before you put the herbs on, because if you put the herbs on first, they're going to go and just fall right off. So now we're just going to gingerly tap it so it doesn't go. I'm going to put them all back in there again. Okay. So there you have your uh, squishy pl plants at the ready. So now you're going to start inscribing on this flashy pink candle hot mess. So usually by rule of thumb, when you're writing from base towards the wick, you're bringing in something is going up. If you want something to get out of your life, you go from the wick to the base. I pretty much just go however I deem fit, how I'm feeling that day. If I'm just wanting to go like that, if I'm just for some reason wanting to go backwards, whatever. I just do what makes it quick, easy, to the point, get it done and out of my life and fixed. And you can also write the intention on it. You can draw sigils, symbols, whatever you deem fit to make this candle be like, okay, this is going to do this and now. So let's see here. You can obviously draw the sign of Venus if you want to be that technical. What I'm going to do is this. And this pen writes so smooth on this candle. I love it. That's where I've read him. Okay, I have written on it, but I wanted to write on it. And no, you cannot see it because that's not fair. That's you know, going to give away the secrets here. So, now the oily part. So, usually when you're putting on your oils, I like to put the essential oils on first. And the oils I'm going to be putting on this hot mess. Ugh, okay. And then lastly, this big honker dropper thing. Okay. First, I'm going to start with, obviously, rose, with a little bit of co with coconut oil, too. Rose, well, if you're new here, rose is the plant that is all about lovey-dovey, cheesy, whoopy whoopy woo It's also, fun fact, rose is the only plant, if you consume it, It'll pretty much adapt to what your body is lacking regarding nutrients and vitamins and minerals. Mm. Bet you didn't know that one, did you? And now that your candle is now covered in rose and coconut oil, or if you're really, you know, fancy smanchy, pure rose oil. Hmm, okay. Hmm. Now it has a bit of a 
rosy uh, scent to it. The next one I'm going to add is marjoram. Marjoram is also ruled by Venus. It's a very, it's a, well, for one, marjoram is an antidepressant. It helps, you know, bring out the goodness in something, hopefully. It helps alleviate stress, and it's pretty much like that. Think of it like that, like an overly optimistic kid trying to cheer up somebody, and the person's still not having it, and that one kid saying, no, it'll get better. And then, you know, the person is getting annoyed by it. Yeah, that's murdering. But you can't get mad at it because it's just a kid. Next, hmm, that's a pickle. Next, I'm going to add ylang ylang. This plant. Well, the first thing that I think of when I smell yangling is, wow, talk about suggestive. Yanglang is a very, very good herb to entice, allure, and also be very, you know, doing the nasty, if you know what I mean. Apply that up, and yeah, go ahead and make your jokes about me doing it like this. Go ahead. Woo -hoo -hoo. I can't have you even seen it done before. Next, Jasmine. Okay. This one likes to, for some reason, just go and drip randomly. Oh, I didn't do it this time. Jasmine is a very lulling, sleeping plant. As well, it is very good at enticing and alluring in men. Oh, but we gotta go at it. Put it right up there, and like that. Uh, jokes, I'm just waiting to see as I'm doing this. Next, my special mix. This one has, again, jasmine flower in it. Forget me not. Sweet almond oil, sunflower oil, apricot oil. There is one more oil in here than I know I put in here. Coconut oil. Crap, what is that oil called? Morning Primrose Oil, which is expensive. Pretty much all those plants smack into one. Yep. That's gonna make whoever is lucky to get hit by this hot mess not be able to forget. And yes, we're almost done with me and you going like this and being all nasty. Okay. Twist that all the way around. Last but not least, Helichrysium. Helichrysium, despite being used to like mend cuts and bruises. Oh, now the label's coming off. Oh, I never know what it is again. Oh well. Helichrysium oil is very good for ensuring the longevity. Well, when you have somebody that you want to be very, you know, seeing you as sweet, loving, and just be completely infatuated with you, why just be, you know, keeping it for a hit and a quit? I'm, I don't go like that. I'm not one of those. Okay, next. I don't like having a list. Okay, so now you have all your essential oils plopped on this thing. Okay. Now the magical oils. As an example, you can use you can use a general love mix. You can use an infatuate the infatuation mix or a bewitching mix. You can use a follow me boy, follow me girl, attract, crap, what is this one called? Chiparosa, which is like the hummingbird, 
or any other oil mix you deem fit. What I like to do, first off, I like to, you know, have this thing have a good idea about what I'm trying to bring towards me first. So that way it's like, okay, got it. So I'm going to put the follow me boy on first. Okay, now, you, now this thing has the intention of follow me boy on there. Next, we're going to add Chiparosa, so that way you know in the minute he looks at you, he gets cavities. I know, what a lovely way, you know, to have someone come towards you. Holes in his teeth. And then add another bit of infatuation, or bewitch, or hearts and eyes, whatever the bloody heck. Completely coat this thing, and it just feels so... Yeah. And general love mix. And one ingredient I'm not going to say. Oily it all up. Mm -hmm. And early up, early up, early up, early up. All over the place. And also. There's the big huge debate saying, well, you have to do it like this and go, uh, or you have to go like this and go, uh. Not me liking to keep it simple. Just oil the bloody thing. The more time you're bickering about it, it could have been oiled up and it could have been all ready and all oiled and ready to be lit on fire. But still, we're having to bicker. So, and if you have any left over oil that you use to coat your candle. Yeah. I'm one of those that likes to make use of everything, so. You might as well coat yourself in it. And now, finally, we have your herbs. Now, usually what you would do, you would have it on a flat surface, like a cookie sheet or something. I mean, I do have a flat surface, but I don't want to you know, make a hot mess. So I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of it. I'll lay this thing flat like this getting surgery. And pretty much just... And of course, if there's any of it that falls off, oh well, it happens. And then voila, you have your candle covered in plant and herbs and it's ready to go and be lit. So, with this candle, you can have it be lit over a set period of time. You can have it be set off and going down in one you can pretty much just let it off say your intent and focus in on it becoming real now you can also if you'd like before you even you know get your hands all oily gooey McMe you could also take crystals and gemstones this for an example of course how cheesy you can even take them, these little guys, and move it up the candle, up the candle, and pretty much have pretty much the stone's properties rub up and down the candle, and then it becomes infused with it too. Pretty much the way that you charge your candle and how you light it and do whatnot is all up to you. The only suggestion that I would say I mean, again, do whatever you deem fit, but whatever happens, if something goes wrong, hey, you didn't, you didn't, you know, you didn't pay attention to the script. There is a belief that you can burn a candle on both ends to make it go really quick. If you're going to do that, make sure the candle holder is capable of ha having that 
happen. If not, just burn it normal like that. So, as well, once the candle burns all the way down, with the remainder of what's left, you can just scoop it all up and go to a cross with roads, look at the remainders, thank them, take a big deep breath, turn about face and go and walk forward and don't turn back because the minute you turn back you're like uh oh gotta do it all over again or you can just bury it back in the ground thanking the herbs for being squished and <laughs> used for your intention pretty much the sky's the limit the next spell that I'll probably be doing hmm I think maybe I'll do something like a either a mojo hand or lucky medicine bag sack whichever I deem fit to you know make a hot mess with so I hope you found this kind of enjoyable and humorous because me I'm all oily and nasty so I'll uh, see you all in the next one, and I'll promise to do less in your windows. Ugh, no one likes these!